I start, let me ask you a question. Have you heard of a black swan event? You say, what is that? Then friends, a black swan event is an extremely rare event with severe consequences, which cannot be predicted beforehand, though after the fact, many false claims it should have been predictable. Moreover, black swan events have a catastrophic damage to an economy by negatively not only impacting markets and investments, but even the use of robust modeling mechanisms cannot prevent a black swan event. And COVID-19 is one example of it. Moreover, friends, infectious diseases spread either by bacterial or viral agent and are ever present in the society. But the speed and the rate of new cases can decide the type of that disease. And the disease is endemic if a disease that is present permanently in a region or a population. Or it can be epidemic when it is an outbreak that affects many people at one time and can spread through one or several communities. But when an epidemic spreads globally, it becomes a pandemic. And friends, COVID-19 is a pandemic. And you can say that COVID-19 is a pandemic black swan event, which brought drastic and dramatic changes impacting not only the present scenario, but also the future times to come. Let me give you a simple example. Friends, if you asked me in 2019 that which are the activities fennel which if managed properly and productively would not result into losses, then friend, mine and your answer would be certain sectors, namely health, education, hospitality, tourism, aviation, IT, etc. Now, post-COVID-19, will my answer be the same? Then it's a big no. It's a big no. Yeah, still, certain sectors remain profitable, that is IT, health and pharma. But apart from that, almost sectors which were profitable earlier, pre-COVID-19, are now not. And not only that, COVID also affected negatively certain sectors like automobile, real estate, seafood, insurance, banking and finance to some extent. You might be thinking that why you are talking so much negative. Then friends, in my today's talk, I'm just giving you the premise of what the reality is presently. But we are going to focus on the positive, come practical aspects that any economy can have to bounce back in post-COVID-19 times. Friends, I might at certain point give you the example of India, but bear in mind that this solutions can be adopted by any economy, maybe India or not. And let us bear in mind, friends, that all solutions and situations have two sides of a coin, which we will understand in this particular talk. Now, friends, I would like to bifurcate my talk into three different parts, three different CSR. You might be thinking CSR means corporate social responsibility. Yeah. But apart from that, two more CSR. The very first is country social responsibility. Country social responsibility. The second is corporate social responsibility. And the third, very predominant, is citizen social responsibility. Now, friends, when we talk of country social responsibility, country, in 1991, Government implemented LPG, liberalization, privatization, and globalization. People laughed at the beginning. But what was the outcome? We see a dramatic change in the economic position of India. And I firmly believe that the changes which I am to discuss, if believed and implemented in true letter and spread, then no one can stop India or to say any country to bounce back. So now let's focus on the very first country social responsibility. Friends, countries needs to now focus on a monetary policy which should be comprehensive 
and it should be implemented in a proper sense. Economists need to bring reforms and regulate their banking and finance sector as it's a crucial element for the growth of an economy. In 2009, friends, a different type of currency was developed. Any guesses of what I'm talking? Yes, friends, correctly, cryptocurrencies. Evolving and now growing. So we cannot avoid it, but a strong need to have a regulatory framework and awareness for it so that the money of the people remains protected and one learns to take calculative risks. Moreover, stock exchanges. One very important, another crucial, but at the same point of time, sensitive factor of an economy due to increasing FII inflow, index touching new and new heights on one hand, and on the other hand, its sensitivity, not only to domestic events, but also to global events, make it very imperative for government of an economy to regulate it. When lockdown was announced, markets saw a huge downfall, then it recovered, and now it is reaching the new heights. Moreover, friends, pharma sector. In 1969, to be specific, Indian pharmaceuticals had a 5% share of market in India and a global share of something more than that. But by 2020, it was reverse, with Indian pharma having almost 85% share and global 15%. Over the last 50 years, in terms both satisfying the domestic needs of medicine and also taking a leading position in the global pharmaceuticals landscape. So there is a great opportunity for Indian pharmaceutical industry to play a larger role in global drug supply security. So government should focus on providing financial and policy initiatives which will help make this happen. So I say India can become the pharmacy of a world. Moreover, country needs to focus on improvisation of the healthcare infrastructure. Moreover, the country needs to focus on developing, promoting, and using some alternative health therapies such as Ayurveda, homeopathy, etc. Moreover, government to take crucial decisions with respect to our foreign exchange reserves, which are based on our export import policies and it mainly on our crude oil import. Moreover, we should do only strategic imports focusing more on the domestic initiatives such as Atma Nirbhar Bharat initiatives and also efforts shall be made to boost our exports. Moreover, friends, more than 20% you can say of the GDP and now increasing at a faster rate, agriculture supports to an Indian economy. This made Indian self-sufficient and taken us from being a begging bowl for food after independence to a net exporter of agriculture and allied products. Moreover, India is blessed with a large arable land and the weather conditions, the soil types, the capability of people to grow things. In my opinion, India and every small economy should focus on agriculture back. Moreover, friends, in the past times, ABCD was A for apple, B for ball, C for cat, D for doll. But we all know the new ABCD. That is A for artificial intelligence. B for blockchain, C for cybersecurity, D for data analytics. Yes, friends, I want to say IT sector has emerged as a pillar of modern economy, though that was born much after independence. The IT has become a long way to become the pillars of modern India. And presently, the sector has generated many millions jobs and provided an indirect employment to approx millions of people. Also, the sector is attracting more and more foreign direct investment inflow and is ranking second as far as the FDI inflow is concerned. But, 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 apart from being a pillar, it may become a poison because excessive reliance affects, excessive reliance on IT affects health on one hand 
and may also be one of the pivotal reason of unemployment also so it sector should be relied on a very cautious basis this time government shall focus not only on higher revenue collection but on best utilization of the collected revenue and taxes because i believe that if best utilized in this times to directly support citizens then citizens will have trust their mindset will change and instead of evading the tax they will start paying tax because they know that the tax they pay is indirectly going to support them and they will be shifted from tax avoidance to paying good taxes and lastly as far as country is concerned india is currently the third largest startup ecosystem in the world and is a home to many startups so my view government should support and boost startup initiatives in a very unique way and there are certain ideas which are unique and novel though not a startup but still support should be provided for them to grow so friends this was something from my side as far as country social responsibility is concerned second comes corporate social responsibility but friends if we see during covid corporates and hnis and ngos all did whatever was possible to be done indeed in many countries also did csr initiatives like government provided free food to people during lockdown and the approach of corporate were different like some cut down of salaries of employees whereas few corporates paid regular salary and some even to the family members of the deceased employees due to covid so different approaches were received but almost when you see the corporates adopted a positive approach so i'm not focusing more on the corporate social responsibility moreover i want to emphasize on the third pillar of my talk that is again a csr that is not country social responsibility not corporate social responsibility but individual responsibility termed as citizen social responsibility citizen social responsibility as i believe our cumulative efforts will make our economy bounce back and citizen social responsibility will multiply the impact of the actions taken by all together in my view everyone needs to be disciplined and responsible towards country equal inner efforts needed to be have not only for good physical health but also for strong mental health to sum up with any action now to be taken is a sum total of country corporate and citizen efforts to say like vaccination drive it started with corporates doing research and production then government and country giving approval and then citizens accepting it and supporting from all logistics and that's how where the vaccination takes place a positive side moreover friends depression is a negative stage for some whereas for some it may be self destruction and for some it may turn out to be a self discovery so let's hope that this covid-19 situation is a depressive event negative event but for all economies almost it turns out to be a self discovery event and to sum up in my view for any economy to bounce back and to have an increment in gdp and per capita income both post covid-19 then cohesive collective efforts are to be directed towards the betterment and improvisation of health of education of economic development come employment generation focus on environment and universal come individual peace so friends if i believe if you believe if all believe and at least if me and you start acting with true letter and spirit of whatever i talked in short then the best days are not too far to manifest so with this words i end up my talk with respect to that what kind of efforts can be done post covid 19 for any economy to bounce back